a lot of it goes back to the hijacking of our education systems. I mean, you know, I've studied Steiner for 30 plus years and my children are in a Waldorf school system and I've studied school systems around the world. And when you look at the fact, for example, that about 95 to 98 percent of all education given in the world in education systems from kindergarten to university come by way of mathematical logical reasoning. But according to Howard Gardner's research and others, only eight, five to eight percent of the world population learns effectively through the mathematical logical reasoning. And when you look at, as Ken Wilber showed and others, that our entire education system was invented by plantation owners to keep the children of the slaves busy so they could work them longer and to teach them not to think for themselves, but to follow orders. And so that industrialized education system has been used to indoctrinate people to think, believe, act, behave, and purchase exactly how the plantation owners, which are still running the world, trying to turn us into little plants in a greenhouse, and it's going on hot and heavy, and they're always up to that. So when you look at the fact that we are in, we went through the enlightenment and we've gotten progressively more scientific and materialistic, which is a left brain perspective. And the left brain is always cutting pieces out of the whole, right? It, it's not the big picture. This is why Steiner said you should not teach children how to read nor expose them to mathematics until they're at least seven to 10 years of age, depending on the child because the right brain hemisphere comes on first in the normal growth and development of the child because the child needs to spend time at the pond and in nature before it starts dissecting the frog and saying, oh, look at this actin and myosin filament. And, you know, because what happens is you start actually seeing everything is isolated from everything else. So we have now got this linear left brain narrative that does not show us how everything fits together and how it works together and why it needs to stay in this integrated whole because that is life. And I'll give you a very simple example from nutrition. You can see magazine articles and journal articles and infomercials all day long of, oh, you got this wrong, take this. I just saw someone sent me a video clip of a guy talking about uh, hypothyroidism and how they're using all these thyroid medications. And ultimately his approach was, oh, you just need to take these B vitamins and do these couple of little things. What was it? It was him saying, you can fix it with nutrition, but you don't need to be taking these uh, T3, T4, you know, synthetic uh, hormones. I said, well, that's really, that's really nice. But what he forgot to say is, how did you burn your thyroid out in the first place? What were the beliefs and the behaviors that led you to living in such a way that you don't know how to eat, you don't know how to sleep, you don't know how to exercise, you don't know how to breathe, and you don't know how to take care of your physical body, and you don't know how to manage your mind. And by the way, taking all those vitamins, about 96% of which are not organic, which means they're all concentrated plants that are loaded with pesticides, herbicides, fungicides, and rodenticides, many of which are synthetically manufactured unless you get certified organic or, or you're, even if you're getting uh, the supplements that are extracts from plants, they are still coming from sick plants. So you can't get good vitamins from sick plants. You're eating concentrations of toxic food from a toxic earth. And I say, well, good. Now that you know that these vitamins will support your thyroid gland, why don't you go look at what foods those vitamins come from so you know what to actually eat and then go find an organic farm to buy them from. And then, oh, by the way, you might want to look at what the qualities of those plants are because that would tell you, for example, what aspect of your life you need to look at. For example, if you need ginseng because you're low on energy, it says... To me, Paul Check, it says, let me teach you how to cultivate energy and manage your energy because obviously you're spending more energy. You're more yang or catabolic than you are anabolic. So the point I'm making is you can take the right vitamins 
And you can make your thyroid symptoms go away for a while, but you still have not addressed the behavior and the imbalances. All you're doing now is doing allopathic medicine with vitamins, but you have not addressed the issue. And those issues go right back to the management of this planet because there's only 4 to 6% of the food grown on this planet is organic and only 4 to 6% of the food eaten is organic and the rest of it's highly toxic and poisonous. And you think just because you're extracting vitamins out of that stuff, well, I got news for you. You can't make chicken salad out of chicken shit unless you're Mother Nature. Though It's just a metaphor. You can't make good vitamins out of poison food. And what's the point of taking vitamins if it's nothing doing nothing but fortifying your ability to continue to live in a way that's unconscious and out of balance? And so what am I saying? You see the left brain approach right there? So the point is, don't teach the kid to dissect a frog until it knows its relationship with the pond and it knows its relationship with the mosquitoes and the fish and everything else. And so as soon as you start teaching kids to read and do mathematical, logical thinking, you chop their mind up and they lose touch with wholeness and you end up graduating with a PhD and you know everything about nothing. That's why they say a PhD is piled higher and deeper. Or an expert is someone who knows more and more and about less and less until they know absolutely everything about nothing. And, and, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm just simply saying we've got fundamental problems. And what I'm really saying is when you put too much of your consciousness through the left brain, you actually keep dissecting, dissecting, dissecting. And so what do you get? You get to things like the hard problem. How does the brain create consciousness? Well, the brain doesn't create consciousness. As Deepak Chopra once said, there was... Uh, <laughs> Uh, it took about, uh, you know, X number of billion years in evolution before the first brain showed up. So obviously something was conscious enough to make a brain, right? So the, the point that I'm making is the, the brain actually is a limiting valve for, it's a filter for consciousness so that you aren't experiencing everything simultaneously at once. And that's the beauty of our intention is we can change the channel. I can focus on you or I can focus on the art behind you. But if you don't have an education system, that does what Waldorf does and builds the right brain connections through story, through myth, through art, through singing, through dancing, through field trips, through like during COVID, my kids school refused to lock those kids up, put them in masks and do all that stuff, which I would have been on them like skunk smell if they would have tried that. By law, they had to put the kids outside. They could not let them inside. So every day, rain or shine, those kids were out in the dirt all day long with their hats under little tents and things. But my kids loved it. They thought it was the greatest thing. Was we come home soaking wet from the rain and covered in mud. They thought it was just fantastic. So meanwhile, everybody else is staring at a computer screen, wearing a mask, not seeing each other's faces going further and further into the left brain while well, the Steiner kids were going deeper and deeper into the right brain under the same stress, Steiner kids got more whole and the rest of the kids got more broken, okay? So do you see what I'm really saying here? Part of the pathology is that the powers that be are pushing us into a disconnected relationship with the world, which generates primordial fear because at an unconscious level, we're feeling very disconnected, which is very scary. We're losing touch with nature. We're losing touch with each other. We're losing touch with reality, that which keeps you alive. We're losing touch with what's happening right now because they're throwing so much stuff at us. You can't think straight. So what a great opportunity to say, hey, maybe we should play in the dirt a little more. Maybe we should actually pay attention to the fact that it's not the supplements that make us better. It's changing our understanding of what creates wholeness in the first place maybe we should spend more time um gardening and less time on computers and cell phones and maybe we should protect water supplies and maybe we should protect food supplies and maybe we should stop poisoning the atmosphere with chemtrails in other words we we can come back to wholeness and the question is you know how much pain is it going to take before we wake up to our potential as souls um you know, Rudolf Steiner makes a very important point in this regard. He says, human beings will continue to invent technologies outside of themselves until they either realize all these technologies are inferior copies of what is inside of them or they destroy the world. The question is, which will come first? And here we are. 
question is which will come first. We are on the precipice of that discovery. 